Happy Halloween everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today on the Robin's Nest I have this spooky little number to share with all of you. We're going to be making a haunted house cake top forward style and be sure to stay tuned to the end to see what it looks like inside. Now let's get right into it. So for today's cake, we're starting it with two 6 inch vanilla cake layers, which I'm first going to trim down and level out, and then we can begin stacking and filling. Now because we're going to be frosting all sides of this cake, I want it to be easy to remove from my cake board so I can flip it over and frost the other side. So I'm going to start on a piece of parchment paper, and we're going to use a little bit of frosting to hold that to our cake board. And then I'm going to add a little bit more buttercream onto the parchment paper before I add that first layer of cake and then we can go ahead and fill our layer. So in keeping with the Halloween theme and mostly because I love purple contrasted with green, we're going to pipe some stripes in the center of our cake between our two layers, making sure to smooth out that frosting a little bit before adding that second layer of cake. Now we're going to take some more of that pretty purple we've mixed up and we're going to add a nice thin layer all over the outside of our cake and I'm just going to use a small offset spatula to apply this but for ease of use and to make the job a little bit quicker you can also use a piping bag to apply your frosting. And now once we've finished roughly smoothing our cake, we're going to pop that into the fridge to firm up for a little bit in preparation for our next coat of icing. And while we're waiting for that to chill, we're going to go ahead and start working on some simple and fairly quick decorations to dress this cake with. So we're going to start with our haunted house first, and we're going to begin with a piece of black fondant, which I've rolled out nice and thin. Now I'm taking a stencil that I've created, and we are marking off the outline of our house, and then we're going to take our X-Acto knife and very carefully cut this out. Now one handy little tip I like to mention is allow your fondant to dry for a little bit before you start cutting. Now what this does is allow it to dry a little bit and firm up so that way when you cut it with your X-Acto knife there's going to be a lot less drag in your blade and it's not going to pull on the fondant quite so much. So you're going to get some nice crisp clean cuts without distorting your image. So now that we've finished cutting out our haunted house, we need to add some windows. So I'm rolling out a piece of bright yellow fondant, nice and thin, and I'm using my stencil to mark off each of the windows. So we're just going to very carefully cut these out with our X-Acto knife once again, and then we're going to stick these all into place. And because we're using freshly rolled fondant, it is a little bit sticky on the back, so they should stick to our haunted house without any trouble. But if you do need a little bit of help, you can use a tiny dab of water on the back of each one, and that should work just fine. And then once we've gotten them all stuck into place, we're going to take a small fine tip paintbrush and some black gel food color, and we're just going to paint some very simple lines in the center of each window. Alright, so now that we've finished with our haunted house, we're going to roll out another piece of black fondant so we can cut out some cute little bats. Now, as you can see, I've already drawn up a few on my stencil, each one being a different size, and we're just going to cut these out once again using an X-Acto knife, and once I'm finished, we're going to set them off to the side. And there they are, don't they look super sweet? Alright, now we're just going to cut out a very simple moon using that same yellow we used for our windows. And I'm going to roll that out nice and thin, mark off the shape, and cut it out using my knife. And you can just use a simple circle cutter if you like, that will work just as well too. So we're just going to go ahead and set that on a piece of parchment to dry, and we're going to set that off to the side until we need it in just a little bit. And next we're going to make some pumpkins. So I've just taken a piece of orange fondant and we've rolled that into a nice smooth ball shape and now I'm taking my Dresden veining tool and we're going to mark the lines all the way around the pumpkin and I like to start by marking off the four quarters first and then I do the lines in between. 
So once we've finished marking off the grooves, we're gonna add a tiny little stem on the top and we're also gonna add a swirly little vine down the side. So I'm gonna roll out a piece of green fondant, nice and thin. We're gonna add that little nub for the stem and then I'm gonna take the thin piece of fondant and we're just gonna curl that up and stick that into place. Isn't that sweet? And now I'm going to go ahead and repeat those steps with a smaller piece of orange fondant, except we're not going to add a vine this time. We're just going to keep it simple and add a tiny little stem. And now that we have our pumpkins made, I'm going to take the larger one and we're going to add a cute little face. And I want to keep this very traditional and non-scary. We're just going to make a nice, friendly, happy face. Okay, now it is time to get back to our cake because we need to add a nice thick layer of this frosting to the top and to the sides before we can move on to the next stage in this cake top forward style of cake. So we're just going to get this applied and smoothed out really well. Then we're going to pop the cake off into the freezer for just a little bit to firm the frosting up and make our cake very easy to handle when it's time to remove it from the cake board in just a few minutes. So while we're waiting for our cake to chill, we're going to make our final fondant decoration, which is going to be a black tree. Now you can make this a 2D version like we did with the haunted house, but I wanted to make this more 3D and pop off the cake, if you will. So I've taken a piece of black fondant, added some Tylos powder, and rolled it into a thick snake shape. Then I used my X-Acto knife to cut a whole bunch of branches, and then I rolled each one individually in between my fingers to make them pointy and more twig-like. And there you have it. It's ready for the cake. Okay, so our cake has had some time to firm up and it is time to frost the other side. So we're just gonna very carefully flip this over, remove our parchment paper, and then add a nice thin layer of this frosting to the top side. Alright, so once we finish smoothing our cake, and while it's still nice and firm and easy to handle, we're going to go ahead and cut the side off of it. Now this is going to turn into the bottom of our cake, and we're going to want to add a little bit of frosting to that so it sticks to our cake board as well. Now you are going to want to make sure to make that cut nice and straight, otherwise your cake is going to lean. And now we're just going to go ahead and pick up the cake and stick that right into place. And I did leave a couple of fingerprints, so we're just going to buff those right out. <laughs> and now we can start adding our decorations. So starting with our haunted house first, we're going to decide where we want that and get that stuck into place. Then I'm going to attach my full moon and my bats. And then we're going to add a little bit of a front yard, which I'm going to accomplish using a piping bag with a little bit of green buttercream. So we're just going to very carefully pipe that into place and then I'm going to take my offset spatula and we're going to smooth that out a little bit and kind of fill in that space. And have I mentioned how much I love purple contrasted with green? It just really makes it pop for me. <laughs> All right, now we're going to finish this off by placing our tree and then we're going to add our two adorable little pumpkins. Aren't they super sweet? Well, that's it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed my spooky little haunted house cake. I absolutely love these cake top forward style cakes. I find them to be so versatile. You can just dress them up in so many ways. And I may be a little biased, but I really do feel like this is the perfect little Halloween cake. But I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. So hit me up in that comment section down below and if you enjoyed the video, leave us a like and if you really liked the video and you would love to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching guys and have a very happy Halloween. Stay sweet!